Hi children, here we are to discuss little bit about the science, the subject is science of class 4, chapter where animals live, that is the adaptations. Now you know the animals live in different places, on land or terrestrial animals, some animals that they live that on the trees, they are known as the arboreal animals like monkeys, squirrels and all those, they come down on the surface to collect their food, yet they stay on top of the trees. And the example is that monkeys and the squirrels and plain land animals are like that of the cows, buffaloes, goats, on the other hand the predators like the cheetahs, lions, tigers, herbivores like giraffe, elephant, rhinoceros and there are several animals out there who stay on the surface of the earth which is known as the land and these animals are known as the terrestrial animals. Well, so we have come to know about the terrestrial animals and arboreal animals also. Now, at first we have to discuss about the land animals or terrestrial animals and their habitat and their adaptations, adaptations. Well, the land animals, they stay, the deserts, forests and uh, mountains and different, I mean, regions like dogs, cats, tigers and zebras. So land animals such as the snakes do not have their legs. So they are to adapt somehow. Then what adaptation they, they move by crawling. Now you know you haven't seen and it, it is not suggested to see a snake by yourself. But if sometimes you see somebody can show you the snake. Then you see there are the plates over there on their ventral side. That means the belly side. And there you see their broad plates are there by means of which they anchor themselves and they can move. So that is uh, adaptation. If you have taken a dissection of a snake, that means if somebody cuts the snake out and you see, it will be seen that there are the ridges of the legs are there, that sometimes they had the legs earlier. Earlier, It is due to the evaluation and adaptation that has been gone chill. Now, some special adaptations are there in some animals are there. Some special adaptations of animals are like the camel. The camel you know as the sheep of the desert. It is a lovely animal, very tall, lovely animal and it carries everything on the desert because desert is a very desolate place, very scarcity of water is there, lot of sand, sand storms and all, sand storms and all those are there. So camel has to adapt itself in various ways. Now what camel does? Camel has a very long and strong legs. What are that? The long and strong legs. These legs keep camel just little bit up from the sand because the sand is very hot during the day. During the day the scorching heat of the sun is being absorbed by the sand. So it becomes horrible for the people to move. But camel can move very easily because they are having number one adaptation that means the long and strong legs which keeps the body away from the sand. So second point is that their broad flat feathery pads, leathery pads are there. Their foot is very broad. Why? The hooves are broad. Why? Because not to sink down in the sand. When you walk on the sand, you see, you tend to sink in the sand, sand because you know sand is, sand is not so solid. So you tend to sink in it. As the camels have broad and padded feet, so they never sink. And also that padded feet helps them to protect from the excess heat of the sand. So that is the second adaptation. The third adaptation is that they have the hump. Have you seen? the hump on a camel yes camel has hump on the back 
and this hump is nothing but reserved food material there are fats are stored there and if the camel does not get the food for long time it can use the reserved food from the hump to continue their journey and the work and to get the supply of the energy so that is why they can go for long without food and water and that is why it is preferred by the people of the desert region to take them to one place to the other draw their materials and all those draw the loads from one part to the other next one nostrils can be closed with the help of some muscles are there with which the nostrils have are checked that means in desert there are often sand storm is there that means the wind blows the sand very very fiercely and if that goes directly into the nose or into the eyes that can harm the animal so they have a system by which they can prevent that prevent that and keeping away that during the strong sand storm they can keep away the sands nextly the two rows of long eyelashes there are eyelashes are there you see one eyelash you have but they have two eyelashes one eyelash covers the other so by that the sand storm is prevented prevented and they can easily look through so these are the adaptations that we find in the i mean uh, camel and the camel has i told you lot of potential for the desert now we come to the another land animal which is known as the polar bear and i see arctic regions they stay they stay in the very very cold region where they are laden by the ice and on the ice they move the polar bear polar bear have you seen they are very fatty and i mean very lustrous structure lot of fats are there just below the skin below the skin there are lots of fats are there why because number one fats keep their body well i mean warm the cat, uh, the fats keep their body warm and now the hair on the soles or the feet help it to walk on slippery ice ice on the snow it walks with toes pointing towards the to avoid the slipping and it has long claws also which can cling to the i mean slippery sand uh, ice slippery ice they have large front paws paws are very large to get more surface and particularly web toes make in a great swimmer and they have made great great swimmer because the toes are webbed have you seen the webbed feet in a duck or in platypus or whatever the feet are joined together and by the webbed feet they swim very very nicely because polar bear has to feed on the feces and all those by digging the sand and uh, by digging the ice they create the hole in the water and dip from there to find the feces and all the water animals on which it feed feeds it paddles with the front legs and uses its hind legs for rudders well it has a good sense of smell and can sniff the dead animals and uh, dead animals from far away and can find seals you know the walrus and seals are the animals sea animals on which the polar bear feeds on feeds on and in dens beneath the snow in beneath the snow the seals and walrus stay and they have the smelling power they smell it and then dig the ice and they can catch and eat them eat them so that to live while its claw help to catch seals its huge teeth are for tearing the prey apart its huge teeth and the body mass and its strength is enormous it can tear apart a very very big seal and walrus in a very very small time time light fur color the color of the fur and as you know if the color is dark then the if the color is dark then the heat will be absorbed so it's light color so that it can uh, reflect the uh, heat away reflect the heat away and by this color they can camouflage themselves what is camouflage keeping them mixed with the surrounding so that they are not 
actually detected whether they are there or not they are not and by doing that they can either keep themselves aloof from the their prey or sometimes keep themselves aloof from the predators by which they are killed by which they are killed so these are the things which are there for them and thick layer of fat or blubber under the skin protects them from harsh cold in the arctic region it's too much cold there so the blubber that means the thick fat which is present just below the skin helps them to stay there nicely well we have now right now some features help penguin to live in the freezing antarctica penguin you know the flightless bird and it is actually bird like structure the penguins are they have thick skin and lots of fat or blubber under their skin to keep them warm because they also live in the arctic region arctic region the dark colored features the dark colored features allow them to absorb the heat and to keep them warm and keep them warm a uh, penguin tightly uh, tightly packed feathers develop to provide the waterproofing and warm they have the feathers so tightly packed that they can dip into the water even the water does not harm them because they are prevented they are waterproof they made them so waterproof a penguin may live on pack of ice in the oceans around antarctica it has a webbed feet for swimming also so it can all the animals living near the water they have almost they have the adaptations as the webbed feet so that they can swim nicely well coming to the arboreal animals now next is arboreal animals second point is arboreal animals now arboreal animals the animals who live on the trees and they come down for their food on the surface of the earth and given you the example the monkeys different kinds of monkeys sloth opossum and all those are animals squirrel is a very common example which uh, is found in the uh, locality and in india it is in hindi it's known as the gilhari all so that is the that is one of the very common and nice animal arboreal animals spend most of their lives in the trees they eat sleep and play in the tree canopy canopy means the shades of the tree in the higher branches branches monkeys koalas possums sloth various rodents and a variety of insects are arboreal many animals have special adaptations to aid their arboreal lifestyle the limbs and tails they have a tail which is very feathery and bushy a tail very feathery and bushy bushy tail we were discussing about the arboreal animals they live most of the time on the trees they play they sleep and all those there they cannot be the trees and then sometimes they come down on the surface of the earth to collect the food like the squirrel and all those even monkeys they come down they come down to collect the food so limbs and tails i told you there are some adaptations in arboreal animals also the tail tail is bushy bushy like a very nice fluffy broom bushy many animal arboreal animals have long limbs and they have the long limbs that allow them to swing efficiently like the monkeys this is the long limbs they swing themselves in the uh, i mean the branches and then they also lift themselves to leap on another branch and cling that is why they have the claws also there to cling them with the branches to the branches some of them have long tails called the prehensile tail this tail is known as the prehensile tail and this tail which can grasp branches and act as the extra limb so they can cling to the branches by means of the tail and obviously there are the limbs long limbs are there which help that is an extra support support spider monkeys are one of the examples of having the prehensile tails tails and possums and the chameleons are their tails to move and balance themselves 
in the canopy and you know the chameleons they mix themselves into the surroundings they can change the color according to the surroundings so that they cannot be detected by the predators so chameleon chameleon is a very nice lizard and it never harms the people the people have a uh, wrong notion about the chameleons that they suck the blood and all those that is absolutely wrong they are very very nice gentle lizards uh, shy type also and if there is a sound they live and so they protect themselves by changing the color of their body to fit the surroundings so that they cannot be detected that is their adaptation now feet and claws you see the animals living in the trees require strong grip and for strong grip needs to have some uh, claws by claws they can cling some arboreal animals such as the squirrel so you have seen the squirrels are bushy tail and their claws are very strong and tight see sometimes the squirrels are sitting on the back leg and taking a fruit and nibbling it as they are rodents they nibble the fruit okay so like that they do like that to do have flexible ankle joints and they have flexible ankle joint because allow the foot to point backwards so that their claws hook into the trees nicely and they can go forward and they can go forward and leap forward and up go up forward uh, many arboreal animals are that type of phrase and some animals such as the tree frog tree frog having almost sucker like foot which they when they jump they leap and go to the tree they can just climb on the tree branches or tree stem by having this by, by having this system so frogs geckos have adhesive pads the adhesive means you know the adhesive that is uh, what is called um, one of the adhesive adaldehyde and all those that is like a glue it sticks like that they have the adhesive pad when they jump they go and throw themselves on the stem and branches and they stick there and then they come up, come out and go forward like that slowly and gradually and chameleons have the mitten like feet to grasp the branches grasp the branches so this is all about the arboreal animals now we come to the water or the aquatic animals the next is the water or the aquatic animals water animals or aquatic animals water or aquatic animals now by the name you have come to know that they stay in the water now do not mix them that all the animals those who are coming in the water they are water animals water animals are those animals the animals those who completely live their life their life cycle they complete in the water they lay eggs or they give birth to the young ones whatever they do they all do in the aquatic environment aquatic environment and habitat the animals are found in rivers or fresh water rivers that is fresh water no salt is there one is fresh water and another is saline water saline water we get in seas and oceans where the salt is mixed there naturally mixed and then fresh water where there is no salt and so that is fresh water so we have animals in fresh water also and some animals live in the Uh, marine water also or sea water also well so animals found in the rivers or uh, or fresh water as well as the salty water of seas and oceans special adaptations help them to survive in such habitats so their adaptation is almost same now fishes taking example as fishes fishes are fins you know fishes suppose this is a fish you see the fishes have tail that acts as rudder and there are fins which is known as dorsal fin there are some fins also there which are pectoral fins their pelvic fins are there these fins help them to propel this is to propel them forward this is to direct them and this keeps the balance and no for the fishes there is a line present in each and every fish which is known as the streamline and this this is this is called the sense organ this is this is the sense organ so fishes are and breathe in water some of their adaptive features are like that fins that 
and the tail helps them to move as I told you the front this is the propelling fin propelling fin propellants and uh, fins guide their movement throughout the water fishes have if you just take out this if you take out this you see there is gills gills are there the gills are there and in the gills 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 are comb like structure where there are plenty of fine red color openings are there that means the tubes like tube like structures are there by which the blood comes out and they are all i mean contractile they are head opens so when a fish takes the water through its mouth they tend to leave the water through this and by his pressure like the gills open and there is a contact with the oxygen along with the food that has been digested by the fish so this is how they do their respiration this is how they do their respiration specialized sense organs are called the lateral lines are there so this was i, I was telling on this is known as the lateral line lateral line that is the sense organ in the fishes lateral line is the sense organ in the fish you have the sense organs eyes ears nose eyes ears nose skin and tongue these are the sense organs there now they have the sense organ as the lateral line so they need to have some sense organ so that they can sense what is there to be to be fish is a powerful sense of sight their sight is very very strong uh, and have um, have senses of light sight touch taste many possesses a good sense of smell and hearing also many of them possesses good smell of uh, smell system of smell so that when you go for fishing you put some food from far away in the water they come to have your food and they are caught by the human being human being the body shape of a fish is well suited to the habitat because their body is streamlined the body is streamlined to prevent the water force force of the water so they can cut through very nicely that is streamlined shape they have slimy matter on their body slimy matter very slippery slimy matter and this protects them from the rotting out that means the decay and all those is saved by that slimy matter which is present on the face body of the face body of the face a bottom feeding fish has a flat body to press against the ground in search of the food some fishes those who live just at the bottom they can press them at the bottom of the seas and the water river water and can collect their food by doing that they have to keep them down beneath so they can press and can collect that that is also their adaptation is the adaptation is next is adaptations that help sea turtles now turtle you know tortoise it's a reptile but it uh, spends most of the time in the water also and tortoise are of various kinds you find them in very small sizes to huge ones if you go to calcutta zoo you find the turtle a huge turtle two turtles are there and you can see that these tortoises are very very old also because the tortoise is the animal who lives lot many years almost 100 200 years so that you can see them so you can see them see them there they are strong swimmers the turtles have the webbed feet and the claws are there the strong swimmers their fore limbs are modified into long paddle like flippers of for their i mean swimming swimming sea turtles spend almost all of their time in the water in the water and their bodies are designed to make movement in the water very very easy very very easily and a shell that is that prevents them from being caught by some things and some injury and all those that is that is uh, there there they can live in sea water with no need for a fresh water source like other marine reptiles the sea birds sea turtles and sea birds sea turtles and have a salt gland to rid their bodies of excess salt 
because if there is excess salt they can have lot of problems that is why they can get rid of the excess salt excess salt well whales are the marine animals also they are also aquatic animals but they are mammals mammals because they give birth to the young ones some of their adaptive features are that having blubber having blubber allows whales to maintain their body heat temperature and survive extremely cold environments extremely cold environments on the other hand some whales can also use their blubber for energy during times when food is scarce because whale needs a lot of food at a gulp they take some tons of plankton so sometimes it is not possible to supply that so that they use their kept energy in the form of the fat fat whale sir eco lock ecolocation to help ecolocation to help their negative uh, navigative navigative navigate the ocean find food and avoid the threats find uh, threats ecolocation is extremely useful in areas where visibility is low and helps whales avoid the colliding with their objects because they are huge creatures if they collide then what will happen they will also get damaged and the object which has been collided that will get also damaged so that is what about the whales are there that is what about the whales are there so whales are very very i mean delicate animals for the for the for the aquatic environment aquatic environments whale must come to the surface to breathe because they have lung lung breathing system so they come out and at a time they take a lot of oxygen to just continue their breathing for long long time due fact is that whales are never able to fall completely asleep because they were if they were there is good chance of could drown so if they sleep inside the water then they can drown them so that is why they cannot sleep with a long long time for long long time they cannot sleep long long time well some birds are close to ponds and rivers rivers and they have some special features that help them to them waddle and swim in search of food they can come to the water they have webbed feet and so that can they can swim, swim. they are feathers are fit to i mean go when they dip into the water they never damage it means ducks geese and swans all have webbed feet the primary use of the webbed feet is for paddling through the water webbed feet are useful in land too they help birds to walk on the mud without sinking because it is having lot of surface so they can cannot sink flamingo have long legs and can wade into much deeper water they swim at the surface while feeding and webbed feet allow them to swim allow them to swim legs where they have completely extremely high salt contents concentrations often the only source fresh water is boiling flamingos are capable of drinking water at temperatures that approach the boiling point that means they are very much capable of having a very very warm and hot and almost boiling water well well we come to the next uh, part which is known as the the amphibians we'll start now for the amphibians and after the water animals we get to know about the amphibians amphibians are the animals those who, those who live amphibians are the animals those who live amphibians my dear children the amphibians are the animals who live a part of their life in the water while the other part in the land very common example is frog and toad they lay they lay their eggs inside the water and at a proper proper time the eggs are hatched and as they are hatched at first they are found as egg mass they found as egg mass you know the egg masses are like that egg mass are like that and from the egg mass they change themselves to the very small shrimp like structure which are known as the tadpoles which are known as the 
tadpoles. The tadpoles are like this. Tadpoles are like this. They have the tails and external gills are there. They have the external gills by which these gills they respire. But these gills are on the side of their body. During the time of their metamorphosis or change, slow and gradual change, the gills, outside gills will drop. Then from the tadpole, the second part is also tadpole. So egg, tadpole. First tadpole with only tail. The so second tadpole with the hind limb and the tail. Hind means back, back limb and the tail. And then from the second tadpole which is having the legs also there, they come to frog. Is the frog is the big ones. That is the adult one. Adult one they come and an amphibian can live both on land and in water and they have some special adaptations that help them to do so. Well, what are the adaptations? A frog is an amphibian and it lays egg in the water. I told you the eggs hatch into the tadpoles. Tadpole has two stages, tadpole 1, tadpole 2 and then which have the water till they grow up till the adult frogs. Tadpoles are long finned tails with the help of which they swim and breathe through their gills which are present outside the body which is not given here but it is actually on the outside of the body and as they grow slowly and as they enter the adult state the outside gills fall then you might ask how do they breathe in the meantime the lung has already been made or body has changed and formed the lungs that is one of the adaptation is there as tadpoles grow into frogs, their bodies change, the tail gives away to the legs, they develop lungs to breathe in land. And one more thing, my dear children, which is not there in book, but for your knowledge, that is, the frog is the only creature which can breathe and respire in four ways. How many ways? Four ways. Number one, by means of the gills that is present during their very, very young stage that means coming out from the egg second is that the formation of the lung which is by which they are capable of breathing right from the beginning to the end of the life but there are two more types of breathing is possible for the frogs are there that one when they go for reproduction that time they are mating means female and male frogs meet in the water, mostly in the water and that time their body remains deep in the water. Then what? Only the surface of the body remains floating. So they have a power to breathe or do respiration through their skin and this is when you grow up will known as cutaneous respiration that they do during their mating period and one more type of respiration is also there. You know frog are, and the toads are two kinds of um, uh, same uh, I mean two species of the same genus one is uh, one comes in the winter one comes in the winter another comes in the rainy season or the summer so frogs what we observe now that they call like like that so they are they are long striped ones they are striped ones long hind legs and what do they do they come during the summer and rainy season. Then what do they do in the winter? In the winter they go for long sleep. Which is known as winter sleep. Winter sleep. And this winter sleep is also known as hibernation. So in hibernation, obviously, you see when you are sleeping. Do you need the oxygen? Yes, you need. We need the oxygen because we need to respire, otherwise we will die. Now, during the hibernation, what happens, you know? They breathe. In the long summer sleep, they keep themselves in a burrow and keep their mouth just at the opening of the burrow and make the mouth little bit of open type. And in the open type, there is a membrane, fine membrane present inside their mouth. And through the mouth, they diffuse the oxygen. They go on doing the 
respiration this is known as buccal respiration this is known as buccal respiration or respiration by mouth this is also this also happens in the this is for winter sleep is for frog now another species is toad you know toad the warty one fat warty not very tall and these are found during the winter because in the summer they are sleeping they are sleeping the frogs are sleeping in the winter and the toads are sleeping in the summer so they are sleep the frog sleep is known as the long winter sleep or hibernation and long summer sleep summer sleep is known as aestivation 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 is that where the frog sleep and all the way the same way they respire by their mouth membrane so this is how the frogs adapt themselves now we come to the aerial animals now when you say about the aerial animals the lovely creatures that come in front of you who are they they are the birds birds also known as the aves and these birds are known as aves because they are avian expert that means they can fly birds are most colorful creatures on the surface of the earth most colorful they have beautiful singing tones and all they have colors and their body i mean postures and their flight and all those is amazing the people go for watching the birds in various bird sanctuaries and all let us see what adaptation is there for the birds are there so aerial animals now we have to discuss about the aerial animals in aerial animals long ago in the very very past there were aerial animals like the pterodactyls also there pterodactyl is a reptilian bird it was a reptile changing to be bird so reptilian bird it has tail but it has wings also it has claws and all those the both the characteristics of the birds of the reptiles are there but that is a previous issue now right now what is what do we see we see the animals aerial animals they can fly the birds some insects and bats for example now my dear children bats are not the birds bats are never a bird they are not avis they are the mammals then what they are flying mammals or they sometimes are called flying fox because of their mouth so they are known as flying fox or flying mammals well so animals however some birds such as the ostrich kiwi all the other extinct bird dodo and all those penguin cannot fly and they are known as the flightless birds so birds with flight but less flight birds without flight now the birds which fly they have the adaptations that their four limbs the chest muscles are very strong because they have to flip the wings so the chest muscles has to be very very strong they have the light body very light body having the air sacs inside the body additional air sacs their bone is fine light and having the air spaces in it so that is the adaptation flying birds are very large breast muscles i told you breast muscles are large and strong and the muscle on the chest pulls the wings down and up the birds have specific muscles that help them to control the feathers during the flight now one more thing before knowing to the wings you know they have various kinds of knots what are they they have various kinds of knots which can help them to fly knots means the knots are that stitches naturally are present in the feather and that is why when they flap the wing the air cannot pass through it if the air would have passed air would have passed then they could not have flight so they need to press on the air so the feathers are nicely knitted so the they press the air and can fly and can fly so that is there the special kind of knitting is there for the what the bird bird birds of hollow bones what i told you right now filled with air sacs these adaptation make birds skeletal system lightweight and easy to get to get in the air the birds are of only birds are the only animals with feathers and it is lovely to see the feathers very very nice colors and various arrangement of the feathers have you seen the crown on the birds head the crowns like the various kinds of birds of their pheasants and all they looks very very nice and very very amazing 
amazing flying birds are large breast muscles and all and the birds are only animals that feathers and flight feathers are found at the end of the wings and the tail tail acts as the rudder where they'll go where they'll perch and all those like that they are doing that the wing feathers are sturdy and support the bird while they're flying while the tail feathers prevent the bird from tilting in the air because they act as the rudder so flight adaptations are there like this so the birds are wonderful creatures we come to another flight adaptations for the insects so after the amphibians we have avis or the birds and then we have the insects some insects fly not all beetle and all those they never fly but the insects like other other the bees honey bees bees common flies and you have the uh, dragon fly and all those they fly butterfly that also they fly bees are two pairs of wings they have two pairs of wings and that help them to fly and for your knowledge you must know the bees and the butterflies having scales very small scales present on their i mean the wings on their wings and their movement is very fast about 200 bit per second so how fast are they and for that strong muscle is required and uh, thus making a, a distinct boos sound because of the wings wave the mosquito give us the sound and they are killed and they are killed so a honey bee can fly for up to 6 miles and as fast as 15 miles per hour so 1 hour 15 miles 15 miles is quite a long distance because in kilometers it will be almost 26 kilometers well and this helps the uh, helps it to visit the thousands of flower while they are collecting the nectar is the nectar is the sweet smelling and sweet tasting flower juice which they collect actually the worker bees collect and they come back to their hive and just stew them that means they excrete them through their anus and keep them there for the future generation to come and have the taste of that that is the food for the future generation to come not for you and me what we are stealing the honey from the Uh, honey bees we are killing them we are taking them out but they are actually keeping them for the young generations to come well the next is that the butterflies butterflies are insects and they have a long nose which is known as proboscis they can coil it and when go they go and see a particular flower the proboscis that is coiled tube part that the mouth part that they enter and easily collect the nectar from there so this is how they do and even the butterfly has the four stages of life and they continue in that way next is that the dragonfly have two pairs of wings and their wings are very small veins are criss cross through all the dragonflies can beat their wings together or separately which allows them to turn easily in the air however and they can fly fly backward also well fight to adaptation in bats now bats are not birds they are mammals they have wings but they are mammals they have their bats are only mammals that can, that are capable of contain continued flight and they have a variety of skeletal adaptations that allow them to fly like birds they have the reduced and shortened bones so that they are flight in a fly enough to get uh, to take to the air because if there is no flight the birds eyesight is very very weak uh, weak so they can go for the orchards and can find food and all those by echolocation well children we have now the adaptations for the protection so the animals they live on in the surroundings and each and every animal has their system of protection is there first one is camouflage you know the tree from the chameleon i just explained it to you they have the system of changing their color to mix them into the surroundings so that they can get rid of the enemies that means the predators next is the stick insects some insects are there who looks like stick they just 
lie on the ground as like a stick is left so the predators they leave it because they think that that is not an animal that is a stick so that is how they escape themselves from that the zebras they use the stripes and they all keep their head together and only their back is seen from the back side to fool a lion so that the lion can see only the striped i mean mass is there so it cannot go to its very very delicious prey the zebras because lions are very much fond of zebras so this is how the zebras serve themselves and that is a preventive measure the turtle shells the tortoise or turtle they go they have a shell and whenever they they found any threat they go into the shell and just stay like that it looks like a rock so the enemies they are full and they cannot see whether it is a rock or really a turtle so they cannot eat them out so this is how they survive themselves on the other hand the arctic fox the arctic fox usually the color is white but with the change of the season they change their color so when they change their color to mix with the surroundings so that they are not detected by the enemies well we have the next uh, hibernation and migration hibernation and migration i have already explained you some animals they go for hibernation a long sleep summer sleep or uh, winter sleep and to protect them from the enemies and migration is also a technique of leaving the surroundings and going to one place from one place to the other the siberian birds and all those they come and fall on the calcutta jew where they rear their young ones lay their eggs young ones and then again they fly back to their places now in hibernating animals those who go for hibernation is that chimpanzees hedgehogs bats and bears they all go for hibernation winter sleep so that to prevent them from the animals and now in a shell you should see the crunches which we know as sunk and we have the snails which we see in the surroundings and all these they have a hard shell and whenever they are threatened they go into the shell and protect themselves by the shell and the spines the hedgehog is one animal which when they are threatened they spread out their spines so that the threat the enemies don't come i have a spine and you be greatly injured so that is how they protect themselves now poison now centipede there are millipedes or there are millions of legs that they are and centipedes so both are in arthropods family arthropods means jointed leg animals and there you see those those animals are having lot of poison are there and in reptiles cobra king cobra and all those snakes the viper russell viper there are lots of snakes and all these animals they never bite themselves when they are afraid for the defense they bite so that is the one that is how they help scorpion is an animal which is also a arthropod and it has a sting at its tail and sometimes it is very very deadly and can even kill the animal enemies now some fishes are there like puff ball fish they increase their size into more than double so that the enemies forget them and they run just misjudge them as bigger than them and so they are afraid and do, they don't take the chances some animals like opossum is a monkey like uh, animal which stays on the trees and whenever they are threatened they fall like a dead animal their tongues come out and their eyes looks that they are lifeless so the enemies the enemies the predators they are full they think it's a dead animal and their habit is not to eat the dead animals so leave them and go away go away now smelly attack in some animals animals like the shark and also another beetle they are having the very very bad smell they leave in the air so that the enemy go away and in the beetle they leave a kind of spray which is boiling hot which is boiling hot so this is how the adaptation for the protection is there and they help themselves to defend by this so children i think you have understood the adaptation that is by land animals adaptation by arboreal animals 
water animals amphibians aerial animals and adaptation for the protection and you see there are various pictures given in your book and i think you'll study it well let, let us see the question answers of this uh, chapters well children we have already started the chapter now we have to discuss the question answers of the exercise here the objective type of questions the answer has been like this guess the animal number 1 the answer will be snake number 2 the answer will be camel number 3 the answer will be polar bear number 4 the answer will be penguin and number 5 that is e then the the answer will be well and number f the answer will be flamingo right now those questions two were underlined the correct words so these are the words which are to be written a arboreal number b flamingos number c turtle number d dragon flies Number E, camouflage. Number F, streamline. And then we have this picture, and we have this picture where the answers has been ticked. Just see the picture, and the answer has been ticked. Well, children. Next is match the column. So for match the column A, the answer will be the answer will be number four from B. So A, the answer is number four, spider monkey. Number B, the answer will be flying birds. Number C, the answer will be. boiling hot smelly spray and number d the answer will be migratory bird number e the answer will be hibernation number 1 and then f the answer will be poison number 3 that is poison will be the answer well the next is subjective type of questions here you have the all five subjective types of question Question number one of five types of question, subjective ones. Why do animals need to adapt? Here you see, like plants, animals also need to spe need special features or adaptations that help them to live and grow in their environment or surroundings. You can write. Well, question number two. What are some adaptive features of camel? A camel, which is known as a sheep of desert and they are these are the adaptations are the long strong legs which keep the body away from the hot sand point number 2 broad padded feet prevents from sinking into the sand point number 3 fat stored in the hump as reserve food materials to enable them to stay without food and water for long time well nostrils can be closed when it is required because there is a system present in the nostril well next is two rows of long eyelashes which protect against the sun and the sun the next question is how does camouflage protect the animal camouflage is the ability to blend into the surroundings to protect from predators like chameleons and leap frog can match their surroundings to make their predators fool well next question is that how does a puffer fish protect itself the blow fish or puffer fish increases their size to double to protect themselves from their enemies enemies well the last question is why do birds migrate the birds migrate to get a suitable surroundings where temperature food and all requirements are fit to rear their new generation that is why the birds actually migrate 
the birds migrate right from far off Siberia to come to the Calcutta Zoo because in Calcutta Zoo there is an inlet of the river which there are a lot of fishes and all those are there which are good food of those birds and they make their nests there, lay their eggs and also they come from the very cold region of Siberia and all and they come to the Calcutta Zoo where the temperature is suitable for them to grow and that is why they lay their eggs, hatch their eggs and when by in the meantime when the winter is over the birds grow and they can fly so that they fly with their family back to their home. This is the migration. My dear children, next is the MCQ. MCQ, your answer is question number 161. A will be number 2, habitat. Then question number 6B, the answer will be number 3, water. Question number C, the answer will be attic fox, number 2. Question number D, the answer will be question number 3, the bats. And question number E, the answer will be 1, is migration. Right now you see another picture where the unmatched animals has been detected. Unmatched animals has been detected. This is the picture you see. It is marked over here. Carefully you see. These three, out of these three pictures, these two are amphibians. Fish is not amphibian, so fish will be your answer. And here, the three creatures are there. Two of them are mammals, while this is not the mammal. So that is why it is the not in the group. So this is all about your all question answers of this answer and except of that I must say you that all the question answers and all those you can get in the website www.bsnes.in and there in the PDF you can just copy them out. Till today, today till this and I think the chapter you have understood nicely your question answers has been given. Study well, stay good and well. Thank you and have a very good day.